I have a moment for you from a recent House Oversight Committee hearing where the subject of prescription drugs, the cost, the outrageous cost in the United States of prescription drugs uh, was being discussed. And that's good to see. I want that to be discussed. Lauren Boebert decided to take this as an opportunity to share a rather bizarre story, illogical story. And also, I want to dive into how, I guess, her uh, pretending to be concerned here with this story, how that also is disingenuous when it comes to her relating to high prescription drug costs, even though she stands in the way of actually implementing policies that would help to lower prescription drug costs. So with that being said, take a look at this clip. Um, again, this is a recent House Oversight Committee hearing, and then we'll discuss. Uh, Dr. Duane, um, I, I think it's been mentioned many times here today, and I, I apologize that I wasn't here for a lot of it. We have other committees going on as well, but um, we've seen an increase um, in prices for medication and treatments over the past few years, you would agree? Yeah, I would absolutely yes. agree with that. And um, and I, I think that you all have elaborated as um, as far as the why, and you're you're welcome to elaborate more if you'd like. Um, but do you see that patients leave their prescri prescriptions at pharmacies because they can no longer pay for it? They absolutely do in my pharmacy. Yes, that that happens um, mo more than should make anyone comfortable. I, I actually have a fun little story. My staff is probably going to talk to me about this later. But uh, I left a prescription at a pharmacy once. Um, I went to get um, birth control, and um, I was there at the counter and went to pay for it, and um, the, the price was very, very high. I said, wow, is this a three, six-month prescription? No, ma'am, this is one month. And I said, it's cheaper to have a kid. And I left it there, and now I have my third son, Caden Bobert. Um, and so I'm actually, it was, it was turned out to be a really great thing. But um, I, I personally experienced that um, when times were tough. But um, thank you so much for your indulgence there, and talk to the team about that comment later. <laughs> um, uh, 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 excuse me, please state your name for me. So Lauren Bobert is saying that she had her third child, maybe tongue in cheek, but the story goes because it was too expensive. Um, she, she did the math and found out it was cheaper to have a child than to pay for birth control. That's obviously not accurate, but I, in my ideal country, that wouldn't even be a decision she would have to make because prescription drugs would be something that uh, individuals can have covered for them by their government under a universal health care program. Um, but still, even in the country that we are currently in, even in the reality we are currently in with high prescription drug costs, no, it is not true that uh, cost of birth control comes anywhere close to the hundreds of thousands of dollars it takes to raise a child. Business Insider noted that according to Planned Parenthood, birth, birth control pills can cost up to $50 per month, depending on health insurance coverage. That's a lot cheaper than raising a child. But even if it were to be way more than that, um, for certain individuals, still nowhere close to raising a child. And uh, then a different article on this, this is from The Hill, titled Bobert on Birth Control. It's cheaper to have a kid. And it's important to get into how even Republicans here in this hearing trying to act concerned about or hear her trying to resonate publicly with, with this story, the fact that prescription drug costs are um, far too high, is disingenuous when you look at their record. And in the case of Lauren Bober, as this Hill article notes, Bober, whose first bill this year was to defund Planned Parenthood, which provides affordable health care and contraception to women, quickly drew scrutiny for these comments. And you also had AOC on Twitter writing, and then she voted against the right to contraception so she could double this problem and give it to the next person responding to the clip that uh, we just watched. And so when it came time to actually uh, take action, to actually choose how she would address the issue that she's saying she dealt with, she actively worked to defund the very institution and institutions that would help to um, provide those services, lower those costs for uh, women. And then expanding beyond just uh, contraception, beyond just the conversation of birth control, the history, uh, or I should say, say the record of Lauren Boebert, Republicans, has been horrible over the last months and years. With the Inflation Reduction Act, 
Uh, one of the big significant parts of the Inflation Reduction Act was lowering prescription drug costs uh, for people. And Republicans, of course, stood against, fought against the Inflation Reduction Act. The specific example of this is in the Inflation Reduction Act, Medicare recipients had out-of-pocket insulin costs capped at $35 per month. Um, and the Biden administration Democrats were attempting to expand that to $35 out-of-pocket per month, even in the private market so all americans would have that um cap and republicans actively prevented that particular provision from being allowed in the inflation reduction act and also in the uh inflation reduction act man i've said so many times in the last few few seconds uh the ability for medicare to negotiate drug prices also was enabled and that also was opposed by the GOP. And so talk is cheap, as people say. We want to see action. And while lots of Democrats also don't challenge big pharma, lots of Democrats also incorrectly act on this issue or um, choose not to get involved like they should, choose not to push for policy like they should, it is even worse on the uh, Republican side. It's in unison on their side that they are not allowing proper policies to be implemented to lower prescription drug costs. So even when she's ready to share a personal story like that, it uh, comes off pretty disingenuous when she works every day to prevent the problem from being solved. And last thing we'll look at is AOC during the same hearing saying uh, this. Thank you for, for this hearing, Mr. Chair. I think um, it's incredibly important that we tackle these issues substantively. And um, I've been very surprised to hear some of the commentary uh, across the other side of the aisle. I heard earlier a Republican saying someone should go to jail for how expensive some drugs are in this country. And I thought I saw a pig flying across the ceiling of this committee room. But where there is common ground, I think we should pursue it and we should pursue it aggressively. Um, Absolutely. Um, and I'm happy to hear them talking about it. I'm happy there's a House Oversight Committee hearing about this subject. But now let's see action. 